I'm live. <sighs> hey, Facey. <clears throat> what are we talking about today? I just need to get into Facey, Facey head. I did that, um, did that thing like five, four, three, two, one, go, because I wasn't ready. I was just sitting here, like kind of my mind was going through all the things that are, that are really arising inside me and that I feel like um, I really wanted to express. And um, I was like, man, I could sit here for like half an hour and still not do it. And the more that you do that, the more that I do that, um, the more it gets really mental and I lose the essence and the, the beauty and the magic and the vibe of what I really want to share. So that's why often when I get onto the beginning of a live, I'm actually in a bit of a flap because I just had to stop myself from um, going into the head of it and um, just tuning into the essence and the heart of the message. And ha, ah, just speaking that out, there you go. I mean, I mean, I can feel it. Um, yeah, so what I wanted to talk about today was I wanted to introduce um, this theme that the ego is stronger than the soul. And I think this can be quite triggering because there's a lot, there's a whole body of information and belief where we just kind of can really hang on to our soul's work and what our soul wants and, you know, the vision of our heart and make that the focus and um, which it is but without really addressing this this truth like and it is a truth um, and it's a it's an archetypal and it's a mythological truth um, you know you I've, I've been doing a, a writer's course and this has been coming up in the writer's course of you know the the hero the villain is always stronger than the than the hero often or like you know like the great evil in let's take like a tr you know like um a great story of all time you know star wars avatar um lord of the rings you know like the the, the great romances where you ha where um you know good overcomes a really grand sort of evil and, and humankind is saved um, the evil, the, the, the foe, the enemy in these archetypes and these stories is always significantly stronger. Like, like, and they, and they grow, their strength grows like during the whole theme and the whole story. And this essentially is really in line. It, like the reason why these stories resonate so deeply and they are so popular, it's not just because they're a great story and they look good and they have special effects and all the things it's because that tension that setup that mythological journey resonates so deeply inside us and who we are and and we really recognize that story inside ourselves because that's what a story really is and so um ego is more powerful than the soul is actually demonstrated everywhere and it's it's like the reason why the whole personal development movement exists is it's why you know like there's there's so many there's so many things to sort of combat this 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 principle this premise and um it's really tempting to, I think there's a part of us that, that knows that, like mythologically, we really know that. At the, re at, at the depth of who we are, we really know that. And um, it's very tempting to, to want to battle that, to, to, to put all of our energy into like fighting that and fighting the good fight and and um, you know, waking up every morning and just being a warrior and just going for it, and you know, like, and there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of energy in that. And um, I would love to propose, and this is not just a theory; this is an actual experience and um, something that I actually feel really drawn to teach and share, is that um, living from your soul and living a soul-led life. And having a life that is like deliciously 
in alignment, like literally where you really do get and create all of the things that your heart desires. Like you get the truth, you get to save the humanity, you get to, you know, you get the prize at the end, you get to really live in that joy, you get to live in your juice, you get to like really own your power. That is not a battle. That is not designed to be a battle. And I was walking down the street yesterday with my son and um, I feel like this is also really prominent because of the portal that's coming up. And obviously that's not just open for that one day, the 2112. Um, in the lead up, there's a whole bunch of things that are happening. And I, I know in my journey, in my personal development journey, I've heard this phrase a lot of times and it's, um, you know, in the new paradigm, there's stuff that can't come. It's like going through the eye of the needle. And um, I've always envisaged that as like a really painful experience. Like I've envisaged myself like going through the eye of the needle and just everything dropping away and it being this kind of like shedding and, and burning off of things that can't fit through this, through this portal. And it never really, like I kind of resonated with it, but I never really had a deep experience of, of what that really how do you actually do that like like how does that actually play out like that's a great it's a great analogy it's true but how do we tangibly experience going through the eye of the needle how do we how do we how we go from like this place where our ego is very strong and it's in control to reassigning that power to our soul because it's so strong like what's what's the bridge like what's how do we assimilate that and um, I have a couple of answers. <clears throat> and I remember teaching a, a while back about frequency. And <clears throat> I've done a lot of study on the gene keys. And that if you've done that, that's really like how consciousness performs in different bandwidths of frequencies. And, you know, there's the shadow, there's the gift, and there's the city. And something, a really big takeaway that I took from that was that frequency really is perspective and how you experience your life and how you experience your singular reality is number one never the same as anyone else experiences their reality but it, it's it's very much based on your perception and your understanding and your like where you're at where your mindset is at in in a particular moment in a particular day in a particular experience and <clears throat> where am I going with this? I've gone off track, but I'm going to bring it back. I promise. <laughs> um, yeah. So what are we talking about? We're talking about frequency and perspective. Yeah. So I was walking down the street and um, part of what I'm going to share with you today is a, is a really tangible experience that you can have to really feel like literally almost instantly how you can take the power out of that ego but and the process that you do this with is really like and I know you've probably heard this a million times but this is really it like it really is this simple um, and it's and it's really about being in presence and being in 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 your innocence and allowing everything that you think that you know like and even the things that you're holding on to that you don't realize you think you know letting that go too, like really, really choosing to be in each moment in your purity, in openness, in endless possibility, in and when you're in that space, only then and only then are you, do you have the capacity and the ability to rise into the field of coherence, the, the field of your soul, the field of creativity, the field of endless possibility, and actually access what is truly there for you. And this isn't something that we have to do all day, every day. It's, it's a strategic play. It's something that we do when we need to. Um, hang on, this, uh, oh, that's better. There we go. <laughs> that was just about to fall off. Yeah. So this, this premise that the ego is stronger than the soul or this, this theme that the ego is stronger than the soul, um, how do we combat it? How do we, how do we actually approach life when that's the case? And we want to live this soul, this soul led life where things actually do work out for us and we're living in our purpose and we're living in our truth and, and the things that we truly desire 
come easily to us and we're living this really powerful experience of who we actually are and we're experiencing ourselves really powerfully how do we do that um and it's not through force it's not like it's not through like smashing yourself up against a wall it's not through like your will your will will be exhausted like this is where chronic fatigue come from comes from this is where burnout comes from like if you constantly try and smash your will against your ego like constantly constantly bringing yourself it will tire you out and you will never you would like you just it just won't happen that's not what your wheels for your this i'm going to explain how to use your will in a more powerful way that's going to align yourself to your soul so i kind of want to give you an experience of this and the first real the first real thing to do is just to um whenever i do this process i, I literally stop what i'm doing and i acknowledge everything that's happening so I acknowledge like if I think my phone's gonna ring or I acknowledge if I think my son's in the other room and he's gonna interrupt me. So like all the mental stuff can drop away. <sighs> I acknowledge that I'm, you know, like I, maybe I'm feeling an emotional or maybe I'm, I acknowledge like all the elements and the layers of who I am. I acknowledge that it's hot. I acknowledge that it's cold. I acknowledge like all the things. So when you can meet like what's actually happening in your present moment, we just like, I see that, I see that, blah, 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 blah. That's when you can neutralize everything that's up. And from that space, um, I choose to step into, um, this is when I choose into, this is when I choose to drop, to step into innocence. So I might just, I might just speak the words that I say um, when I'm doing this in a session and I'll, and it's sort of, it's a shamanic experience to change your frequency, to change your perspective, to change your energy so that what you can, what you can reach into is different and your creativity and your power is different from where your perspective is and what vehicle you're driving, what orientation you're in. And this is what it's all about. It's about, are you going to be in the orientation of your ego, which is more powerful, or are you going to be in the orientation of your soul? And when you acknowledge your ego, like fully, fully be like, okay, this is happening. And it's, we're not labeling it as bad. And sometimes it feels like icky, like holy crap. When you see what's happening, when you see how you're uh, like being juvenile or whatever you're doing, when you see that, it can be icky, but it also takes the power out of it. Because the power is that it's in the shadow. Every time we try and rise, we will always cast a shadow. We will always cast that shadow. But just seeing it and bringing awareness to it and noticing it, that's where the power is. And that's when you actually have the capacity to shift into this, into this next part that I'm going to share with you. And I'll give you the words of what I say. Um, yeah, so first I acknowledge what's up. And then I um, take a deep breath and I acknowledge that I'm a powerful creator. And I let that orientation just become my being. And I choose, I choose to remember that there is a grander part of who I am. This grander part of who I am, which is always connected to things through all space and through all time. And I feel that connection. I allow that connection to drop in by choice, like this is a choice. It's like you're guiding yourself through this path to your soul, to connection, to like, to real connection with your heart and with your soul. And I feel that and I guide that. And acknowledge that this grander part of who I am is literally my birthright it's it, I, there's nothing that i need to do or have or be or pretend to be or anything it's literally it's always there it's available for everyone and in this process right now ah hey sam i choose it like I, I choose it like literally right now um and from that space i almost kind of feel like i'm in a bird's eye view like I'm like I have this perspective like this kind of eagle perspective and I sometimes I call that the the field of coherence and sometimes I see it as like a shimmering light and I see different colors or you know I can almost I sometimes I even see a maze like there's you know like there's this is where I want to go this is my vision and there's this whole maze kind of area and it's like looking above the maze and it's just like there's it, there's a real timelessness aspect to this space 
there's a sense of curiosity, there's a sense of wonder, there's a sense of there's just this real openness and my whole identity, like who I am, my beliefs, my ego beliefs, the vehicle that I drive around in as a human doesn't exist in this space. Well, it's, I mean, it does, but it's a part of this space. It's integrated into this space. It's not what's driving. It's not what's in control. And it's you choosing to give like, and this is a process, as I said, you do this process strategically. You can't walk around like this all day, but you use this process strategically. You step up into this space. You do that process. You talk yourself through that process. You go into the innocence. You, you rise into coherence. You see yourself above in that timeless space. And then you choose it, you choose that. And you and the other process that I do is I, I create a circle and I label that circle and I define it as something, something that I wanna know, something that I need to know, something that I'm looking into, whether it's a project, a relationship, a vision or a choice or something. Um, and I, and um, another premise, this is from Lily Whitecloud, definition creates reality. So when you're defining that circle as something, when you step into the middle of that circle, you have an experience of how you've actually defined that circle. So if you want to define it as your highest vision, if you want to define it as what's happening with your ego, if you want to define it as my grandest version of something, you know, there's so many, that it's endless what you can, what you can just define that circle as and just stepping into that circle and seeing what's obvious. Um, I actually write it down and um, until it's finished and if I feel like maybe there's more and I can't see it I will ask like what's more so it's this beautiful sort of like flow state of journaling and writing and 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 feeling um, and I write it down and I take it really seriously like it is a game and it is fun but it's not just a frivolous experience that doesn't mean anything like our intuition is always on point our intuition is always valid and our intuition is always telling us something it's 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 like designed to be on our side and as per the the topic of this live it's a more subtle energy it's it's a lighter more refined energy so so in that process that I've just described to you you're assigning your power to those subtler energies it's it that's a way to 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 reassign your power so you're letting go of that ego you're letting go of all of that the definitions of all the things that are holding you back because when you're when you're when you're choosing the orientation of your of your ego when you're choosing the orientation of your human experience because that's what your ego is made up of it's like all the experiences that you've ever had then you're always going to be limited because you can only have the experience that you've had and that your ego must define things in a certain way so that you can like live it's not it's not a bad thing like your ego is actually trying to help you it's trying to protect you it's trying to like be like yep we need to do this first like all the things but it, it just doesn't have the same perspective as you when you're rising above into that coherence field and connecting into that part of you that grander part of you that is always connected to all things through all space and through all time so how do you outsmart the ego it's through creativity it's through accessing your genius it's through exactly that process that i just took you through of rising up into that coherence field letting like consciously letting go of that ego self and and asking questions from that space like really tapping into that intuition and strengthening that using that it's like being in a living relationship with that field um, and that's just a really tangible way for you to be able to access that and some people call it your genius some people call it your soul your inner being your creative aspect um, yeah there's, there's so many different there's so many different um, names for it but essentially it's it's your blueprint it's like anything that you extract from that space like the visions and the dreams of your heart these things are for you that they they are you can see them because you're meant to create them in this lifetime and in this experience and if you are experiencing that your ego is regularly stronger than your soul and you're living that out daily 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 this is a really great practice to be able to just drop that ego. So just to run you through it, just to, just to um, go
go over what I've just said, repeat what I've just said. The first step is to really neutralize what's up for you. Like the obvious stuff, my baby's crying, my phone might ring, and my tummy's sore, you know, like all the things that are, that are up. The next step is to then from there, like notice that that has actually changed your energy field. Then from there, choosing that you are a powerful creator and really choosing that, like letting your energy go there, really choosing it and stepping into that orientation. And then from there, so it's like, can you see how you're like building steps? It's not just like go straight to it. And sometimes you can, like sometimes it just drops in. But what you what we need now to navigate is a reliable system and a reliable structure to be able to get there no matter what, like no matter where you are. If you're in like the depths of despair, if you're in the highest elative highs, if you're in... A, a, an issue with your relationship when your emotions are like going crazy and nuts and you really want to find some kind of clarity like you need you need a reliable structure to be able to access this place it's not just and most people that are watching i'm assuming you probably go to this place naturally like many times in a day in a week in your life you've experienced it many times but what i'm talking about is strategically using this having a system where you can access this in like reliable reliable so you neutralize you acknowledge what's up you, you choose you're a powerful creator you really choose it you acknowledge that this is the grander part of who you are and like sometimes when i do this i actually see my whole self just like really really expand and my ego just turns into this tiny little speck but this tiny little speck is still always a part of that grander part of who we are you know that that the real truth of who we are, the, the, the realness, like the, that, that part of us that we know is connected to all things through all space and through all time. We rise up into that field. We choose to serve our highest good, the highest good. We choose to be open, we choose to receive. And then you define, you create and define a circle. And then you jump into that circle and you, um, yeah, you, you see what's obvious and what's there. Um, so, I hope that that was helpful and you got something from that and um, I think it is really pertinent to respect and understand that the ego is more powerful than the soul like I think that can really frustrate people because it's really easy to look at other people's lives and think oh they're just living from soul all the time no one is <laughs> no one is like this this battle it's like the battle it's the it's it's, it's an eternal battle it's it's a daily um, I actually don't want to use the word battle, but it's, it's a daily, it's a daily edge. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's constant because we have to live in 3D. Um, the constructs, the laws of the earth right now are, you know, they're very physical and, you know, there's laws of gravity, there's laws of physics, there's, you know, and they apply, even though they look like they apply to an apple falling from a tree, they apply to consciousness as well and so there are limitations there's like there's gravity there are things that are going to weigh us down if you put that meant that in the metaphysics of what that is there are things that are going to bring us to ground always what goes up must come down there's you know there's so many laws that govern not only our physicality but our consciousness um so there is that there is that construct that we're playing in and um we also have the capacity if we focus so it's, this is like Frequency is focus. Frequency is perspective. Frequency is you choosing to switch from one to the other. And the 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 magic of like the the definitive choice is is stepping into that innocence. It's really choosing that grander vehicle to access higher information so that you can choose that higher information. And that higher information is always going to give you a perspective. Um, and often life seems like I've got this paradox. How do I do this and how do I do that? And this is when we can rise into that field and really sit with it. And you may get an answer like immediately and the answer may arise, but the answer always arises, especially if you can hold the tension. So um, <clears throat> this is what I do. <laughs> you may have seen on my Facebook page, I have an offering called um, Clarity is a Diamond. This is um, really profound and deep soul work that I'm doing um, with supporting light workers, people on a soul mission, those who really want to live their purpose, into tapping into the heart of their blueprint. Like what is really here for you 
what is what's here for you in this life like like what is possible what is going to bring out your heart your soul like what are you bridging what is your essence what is your mission so i think that's really important that vision and most people actually know what it is but they can doubt it because you know that it's never been validated you can't go to a university and be like yes you are a light worker and blah 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 you know like it's not really mainstream so that is really powerful and really valuable um, just to have someone tap into and see exactly like the nuances of your genius and your energy and what is here for you and who you really truly are um, just as a reflection and a remembrance and there may be stuff there that you don't know but usually it's stuff that you do know but it's very 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 powerful and specific when someone else can like you know really look at that and offer it to you um, in this session we also go into your current reality like what's your ego doing how's it playing out what are the patterns where is the energy stuck um, what's coming in what needs to shift you know like all that stuff is like which is really really we need those two points we when we're going for something when we're creating something the vision like the clarity of the vision is so 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 important but what is often so often overlooked and this is why i did this live is is the ego like and how powerful it is and it it's only can be the, the the power of your ego can only be taken away with awareness of the ego not with force not with like pushing against it not with ignoring it it's the it's purity of your awareness the beauty and the purity of your awareness and your ability to activate your genius and by acknowledging these two points in this structure that is how and when we can activate your genius so that's what happens in the session is your genius comes forward your blueprint comes forward what's happening in your current reality comes forward and your next steps so if you break this down into a model of of alchemy like turning lead into gold so the lead is you know the heavy stuff the things that are kind of holding you back and the limitations then you know you also get that higher perspective that insight but those two elements together do not turn lead into gold um, unfortunately even though it can be a really freaking amazing experience like knowing your vision can be amazing and super powerful and it can give you energy for a certain amount of time but without the right action without the aligned action without the action that comes from the wisdom that arises from that structure of creating those two points there is no completion of that process so there is no gold and it can lead to circles it can lead to burnout it can lead to confusion um, yeah there's so many things so the sessions that I'm doing is called clarity is a diamond and um, it is um, super valuable there's many facets to it you know there's a lot of beauty to it um, yeah what other aspects are uh, diamonds I think they have many qualities um, you know, there's a strength in a diamond. Um, obviously, it's forged from um, from pressure, which is like how the actually that's actually that's actually a thing. It is forged from pressure, and so is your genius. Like so is the wisdom that arises from our session, because tension seeks resolution, and we're creating tension by really diving into your blueprint, really diving into your current reality, and then allowing that wisdom. The pressure that tension to bring forth the diamond which is the clarity which is your like what's what do you do next um so yeah i just realized that because um that's really cool <laughs> so um yes i'm going to be running these sessions um over the next couple of weeks in december um there's not heaps of spots there's only a few and um yeah i want to work with people who really want to know their vision who really want to bring fruition to their greatest dreams and desires in like now and into the portal and into 2020 2021 and beyond um i do yeah especially um i tend to attract women and mothers um but that's not intentional um i do like to open this to everyone but i guess everyone's holding certain stuff and that kind of tends to be my energy and and who I really resonate with and I obviously really understand that consciousness because I am a mother and I've experienced it and um, yeah I I also have yeah deeper calling to build communities around mothers and motherhood and all the things so 
I'm going to drop the link for Clarity is a Diamond here. These are really... Aw, thanks Sam. I'm proud of you too. I'm so glad you tuned in for the whole time. Thanks beauty. Um, yeah, so that's my offering. Check it out. I'm going to drop the link below and um, um, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in, all of you. Mwah, mwah.